Nice indeed. I, I, I still play Brightwing only. Um. I noticed. <laughs> Seeing as you only just today realised you can't use the Wonder Billy in Hero League. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Brightwing doesn't need a mount. Um, <laughs> and it was actually Naz that brought that point up. He came mm. back for a game or two today. Fair but, yeah. enough. Well, we're loading into game number one. This is the round of 64, I believe. Yep, and round 64 indeed. Yep, so winner of this will be moving on to play against Well Met in the round of 32. So it's going to be quite exciting. Quite exciting indeed, as now the mines should start to descend upon us. And there we go, we are loaded in. And I believe that on the left hand side of your screen we have a team known as Not Found. We have Krimlink on the Zagara, Despion on the Muradin, Nodini on the Brightwing, Shrio on the Falstad, and Midas, Midas, Mides on the Vala. I like, I like Midas, even though it's not an A, yeah. it's close enough. And on the right hand side, it is Team ITG Dauntless, but we shall call them ITG, aka Invisible Fret Gaming. And starting in the top lane, it is going to be, D excuse me, D Zero 19 playing on the Malfurion. Under Takos, under under Tacos, under under Rakos, under Rakos, under Rakos on the Diablo, <laughs> Death Watch, which is a great name on the Zeratul. <laughs> There's going to be Black Sheep playing the Anubarak and Terrorizer on the Jaina. Very aggressive, so, yeah, evil names say, here. <laughs> those are some scary, scary names right there. Also, um, Invisible Fret Gaming has a Zeratul called Death Watch. That is so appropriate. It is unreal. <laughs> it is, and it's going to be a Zagara solo lane up here to start things off for Not Found. They are going to oh, just she, borrow straight oh, on here. She get did. CC down the oh, roof the body block, the though. Now it comes in, <laughs> and that's a dead Zagara. Yes, yeah, solid body block, and then overpower into the root. Instant murderization there. Terrorizer dodging out the hammerang in the bot lane, keeping himself alive. Looks like Valor is, in fact, going for the auto attack build with the ranker talent at level 1. Everyone else pretty sad of stuff. The blink cooldown is being taken by Zeratul. Looks like Jada is going for the fr the Frostbolt build that we've been seeing a couple of people run recently. Yeah, it was a Na'Vi player, if I recall correctly, I that ran this Frostbolt. So. I think build. so. It was Na'Vi, and I know the Bakery ran it once. In comes the uh, in comes the Shadow uh, Shadow Gosh. Charge coming out from under Rakos. And Ubrak completely missing, gets silenced, gets Polymorph. He is going to get away, but now Zeratul is caught out of position. He is also going to blink out, but instantly, ITG have been dropped super low. And with 20 seconds till the mine's opening, they're all having to tap Fountain. And now they're making their way up to the top lane by the looks of it. One at a time, still leaving two people in the bot lane though. Yeah, we still have Falstad and Vala down here as well, of course. Right wing on Falstad can fly up if they want, but it looks like Muradin's coming down here. Zagara will be joining them, and they'll try to clear out this bottom portion of the map, then jump straight on into the mines. Jaina and Anubrak only just rotating up as both teams enter at relatively the same time, but side on the left, not found. They have this advantage here. They have the players. Anubrak still yet to enter. Yep, in fact, uses his burrow charge to get into the mines quicker. There is a scuffle in the bottom of the mines. Diablo, once again, getting polyball takes the damage, but the root did come down from Manfurion as Brightwing has teleported in. Overpower comes out from Diablo, does catch Valor. Valor has been dropped to about half health. Muradin, also pretty low, but he is going to get that regen once that Locust gets off his back. And no deaths yet in this particular part of the fight, so both teams are going to be just separating out, going to start getting those skulls. Right now, though, more skulls are over in the favour of Not Found. Yeah, and it looks like they're about to get eight more on the board, taking them to around 43 here, and then the fight will commence over the boss. And it could be a very interesting kerfuffle here because both teams are about to hit that level four. If one team gets a kill here with Diablo being so low as well, he gets caught out and they kill him, then that's level four over there. And, and it's there both he teams goes. level four. Death Watch, though, off to the oh. side. He's right next to Zagara. No one has seen him yet. He's just standing here, though. He's I think just he... watching death. Yeah, I think he's going to maybe try and blink in and steal some skulls, but he's a bit late if he is. What's the plan? Maybe he's just going to wait until... Oh. Is he going to yeah, hang around? I, I thought he was going to wait to see if like one person goes B later than everyone else and catch him out. But no, he's just backing out and just staying there so he didn't get caught. So, Skulls go over mostly to the team of Not Found. 
And, well, that is mostly due to the fact that even that the, they were able to pick off Diablo early on in that fight. We'll see ITG taking the hard cap, but in comes the team of Not Found trying to raid their way in. Faustad coming in from the top is doing huge damage to Jada, but there is an Ian Venom. Going to be forcing him to back up Diablo once again, getting absolutely annihilated due to the Manticore of Valor, but she takes a Frostbolt and part of a Blizzard to the face for her trouble. Yep, and that hard camp has gone over to Not Found as the Golem spawn as well, so that's just going to be a little bit of a counter push here up in the top lane. Black Sheep reasonably low here as well. The Siege Giant camp in the top, though, taken a little bit too soon. They're just going to push straight onto the towers, whereas bot side, these uh, red Siege Giants will do some damage, but they are reasonably late as well. That's two towers down now in the bot lane from this 73 Skull Golem. It's taken very little damage as it now starts to hammer away on this fort. They could, in fact, catch out Diablo here as well. Muradin's going to go in, misses the stun. If that stun had so hit, that low. would have been certain death, but the false stun isn't going to be able to grab it there. Malfurion and Hill just keeping them alive as we see a whole level lead, and no one is soaking top right now. And those siege champs still just keeping They were actually away wailing the on the boss until just yeah. now when the minion wave showed up. So that was a relatively well positioned there. If they had someone to hold up the minion wave, they would have been attacking the entire time and got a couple extra hits off. But for now, they're just wrecking the entire bot lane. Yeah, they, they certainly are as now. That's one more tower down, two towers down, the gate falls as well, and they're going to be going on towards this keep. Black Sheep getting very low, has to borrow underneath that stun. Rather risky to be fair, but did come out on the safer side. Diablo got polymorph there as well, took some damage. As this Grave Golem should fall now, the keep will be down to about 50% oh, HP. Diablo got <laughs> rooted by the Golem itself, and that got taken down, so this keep will indeed go over to the side of Not Found. They're just going to back out here after grabbing the fountain and then play things super, super safe. Indeed, an interesting talent choice here. We do not see the boomerang talent coming out of Falstad. It is, in fact, the secret weapon we are seeing, giving Falstad a bit of that auto attack potential, as opposed to the little bit of burst damage that he gets from that boomerang. So, a bit more reliable. And this is the case, we're more than likely going to be seeing Giant Killer on the level 13 talent, just so he is more effective in those auto attacks, considering he's against a Diablo and an Anubarak. Pretty wise choice. Yep, certainly so as now. You're going to just see both teams, well, ITG going to be trying to soak both lanes, whereas not found, they're just going to be applying as much pressure as they can. They have the level lead right now, and they're going to try and extend that with an absolutely huge push in this top lane. Zagara doing so much with her Banelings. The rest of the team just also attacking these towers down. That's going to be 800 XP as Diablo tries to engage, gets polymorphed up. That's going to be a kill. Black Sheep has no way of escaping here. He is also very low to borrow charging in. He falls as well. And the gate is the only thing stopping them keeping it going forward. But now that's down, they're going to start hitting on to this fort. Death Watch can't really do too much here, nor can Terrorizer, except maybe throw the odd Frostbolt or Blizzard in. And this fort is going to go over and putting them a step closer towards that level 10 mark. Yeah, and this is not going well for ITG at all. Not found, just being absolutely dominating in this. Diablo is back. He's trying to look for an engage, but he gets polymorphed into the stud. Root will not, Root will land, but... It does, in fact, save Diablo. In comes the Strafe. A little bit late. Gets a nice amount of damage, though, onto that Malfurion, who is going to have to tap the Fountain. And not found and not yet done. They're going to continue pushing this, and that is something they can do, because they're in very little danger right now. Every engagement that is tried is just completely ignored. And Brightwing, you saw there, he got, she got engaged upon, and then just turned around, polymorphed, and then just baited for a bit, blink healed to her team. And now, it looks like they're trying to set up a nice bait engage. They will be four versus five. Valor's completely separated from her team. But they're going to try and fight anyway, and Jada gets taken down instantly by those bailings. Valor comes in from the back. He, she's going on to Black Sheep. Diablo's once a bit caught. A hinterland blast takes him down. Deathwatch goes down to the Valor auto attacks. Black Sheep will escape the mines, but Muradin is already out there going after the zero, and Black Sheep jumps over the stun. Black Sheep now being chased by Valor, and we could probably see Muradin go after that Malfurion, but Malfurion is already mounted up and escaped. And in the meantime, the rest of not found already in the mines taking everything yeah if they get around 70 skulls here i think this is game and the likelihood is they will itg are nowhere to be seen right now not found have complete control of these mines they've already got 46 with four camps left plus the boss they're gonna get 70 here probably 100 as well as muradin just leaps over to get these eight from here right wing tps down they have all five players down here except for the valor 
who's just up top, soaking a little bit of XP here, making sure that Death Watch and Underakos don't come on in. She's now gone down. This Hundred Skull Golem will more than likely end the game. She is really not needed here. She's gonna arrive in time and to get like three auto attacks. One, two, two three, three, three auto attacks, <laughs> and that's about it. And she, that was really unneeded. She could have been up top defending this. Wow. I guess it's game over anyway here. I, I'd expect so. 100 Skull Golem yeah. plus 5 man push pretty much equals dead invisible threat gaming. So we're going to be seeing the team of Not Found move through the bot lane and push this up. Not even going to bother with the mercenaries other than the their siege giant camp, which Brightwing has bribed. And that's a pretty well-timed bribe. Should be in time to meet up with that boss pretty nicely. And if not, the minion wave will hold it up. Brightwing teleporting to her team. They're going to clear out the giants that were taken by Invisible Threat, and are now going to move forward and join their boss. Yeah, this is just a matter about... <sighs> so, this boss is... At... This Grave Golem's actually taken quite a bit of damage, but it's now the threat of the heroes here as well. They try and burst everything down, as their focus is on Jaina. That's a stun straight away. Water, Ele Water Elemental already Ooh. being used. The EP hits three players here and gets cancelled straight away. Not in time for the Apocalypse. Black Sheep has to borrow charge away. Does knock up faster there, but it just isn't enough. That's a two for our exchange. This boss still wailing on the court, only now is it doing fatal damage, but under Akos will fall. Jaina is last one standing. She will go down here as well. A five for a swipe sweep. And that's the court down as well. Solid play there from Not Found. Yep, super well played. Able to take complete control of that game and did a very, very good job. So they will be moving on to play against Well Met and yeah, we did actually see a very nice Void Prism out of Zeratul, only the fact he did catch way more of his teammates in it than the enemies, but it did still cancel out the Hinterland Blast for a bit, so it delayed that damage, so they were able, excuse me, they were able to get at least some counter going, but was enough to pick off anyone. The only person they killed was that Zagara that they got the early gank on in the early game, because she was on her own versus four and got a very nice body block from Diablo, and that's all they could get. They couldn't get a single one once the team... Uh, what's the team of not found started grouping up and pushing together and look at that kill participation as well yeah they, they all joined in on every kill yeah super cool solid solid teamwork from not found so guys for now we're going to take a short break while we do get that round of 32 match set up and underway don't go anywhere we'll see you in just a few minutes